Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, uh, the last currently scheduled interim for Cozy. Um, as uh, and I as the working group meeting, it is subject to the note well, um, as we have been in the past. So just um, please make note of rules when it comes to. Um, contributions if you're going to um, speak here today at all. Um, uh, Administer via, so we just went through the note well. Um, is anyone willing to help take any minutes today? If not, I will, um, mostly all we're looking for is, is action items going forward. I can probably grab most of it. Thank you, Jen. Um, and well, the chairs will help, obviously. obviously. Um, for the attendees, um, we have a section in the minutes, which there's uh, two links in the WebEx chat um, pointing to where they are. If you would please put your, um, include your name there. Um, this is what will turn into the blue sheets for the meeting. <clears throat> and then so our agenda today is to go over um, outstanding feedback for our documents. Um, uh, charter discussion and then um, any other business, including um, when we meet next. Uh, is there any uh, Anything we'd want to change on that agenda? All right, taking silence, there's no objections to it. Uh, for document feedback, so um, I'm not sure how many people have had a chance now to read the counter signatures uh, document that Jim had posted a couple weeks ago. Um, but I did see at least Jim posted one note with regards to the um, some potential conflict with message recovery signatures. Um, was there any other feedback? I think Francesca, you mentioned that you may have some. No, I don't have. Um, yeah, I haven't had time to go into details for that document. No worries. Um, okay, do you want to talk about the uh, the message recovery conflicts, or do we? I think Jim summarized it pretty well. It's really just kind of a, maybe it's may, maybe it will be an issue someplace else. There's nothing. There's no problem here. And then and to for clarification, it's not a problem because there currently are no message recovery signature algorithms. It's not a problem because you you don't want to do use message recovery signature algorithms with counter signatures. Okay. All right. Um, Why in general is that the case? If you use a message recovery with a signet with counter signature algorithm, you have to validate the counter signature algorithm before you can validate or decrypt whatever it is that was countersigned. I guess I could maybe imagine environments where that's seen as a feature, but I think in general it would be an anti-feature. Which is why I agree with you that it's not really an issue for now. Any other comments on counter signatures at this time? 
Okay. Um, can this document does need review? Um, is anybody, um, in addition to Michael Richardson, who I see uh, mentioned that he's intending to read it, anybody else um, willing to read it and provide feedback for the next some period of time? So this is Hank, um, this is the awkward silence here. Um, um, I, while I really would like to do so, and while I really think this should happen, I really also think that I am not capable. That is the reason why I'm speaking up. So uh, a review on an editorial level, of course, sure, but but it's a specific issue. Sorry, I um, I do not see myself fit to... Uh, add something to the discussion that has already been added. That is uh, my uh, problem, personal problem. All right. Um, well, thank, thank you for that, Hank. Um, that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, I know this chair does intend to read it, just hasn't had the, the opportunity just yet myself either. Um, I'm going to commit to getting that done within the next week um, and then be able to provide some feedback. Um, and I see Francesca is also committing to some period of time. Uh, so we'll, we'll get those reviews going. Um, with that, I think that's a decent segue into the message recovery. That's our major outstanding issue for RC 8152-bit struct. Um, so for the... Jim had posted some updated, has po had posted a proposed text, Ben had commented, and Jim had an updated text. Right, Jim, the comments are review from, from Ben. Well, you should check your mail then. I, I posted a new response like five minutes ago during oh, the meeting. Well, that, Haven't you okay. seen it yet? No, it will show up in my mailbox about 20 minutes from now. <laughs> Sneak sound, <Okay>. okay. <laughs> well, well, Ben, since you're here, would you mind uh, giving us the TLDR of your update? Yeah, I think basically it's just fine. There was one uh, proposal that Jim had made that was not in the full length text, and I, I would accept that proposal. And then I just had a question still about the, I think it was the application external data which was a phrase that I didn't quite understand what was supposed to mean. Um, if you take a look at the structure for anything, all of them support an, an external data field supplied by the application. I see. So it's not a term specific to this discussion. It's, like a it's not a term specific to discussion. It's a term specific to the document. That's That would explain the context that I was missing when I was just looking at the snippet of text. OK. Um, has anybody else had a chance to read through that and have any comments? Well, I guess, sorry to across the streams, Matt. Um, it looks like maybe we call that externally supplied data in in the generic usage and not application external data. Um, That's quite possible. I guess I, I shouldn't put you on the spot so we can follow up with that. Uh, over email and return to Matt's question. Well, my question is if anybody else has comments, um, and then that's going to lead to another uh, proposal. But let's start with the, if anybody else has comments. Okay. 
Okay, I'll take the silence. There's no objections. Um, so I think the chairs would propose that Jim um, make the update to the document directly. And then, because um, right now, everything everything I'm reading is uh, Ben's latest comment. It sounds to me more editorial, making sure we're, we're aligned on terms. Any, uh, does that sound about right, Ben? Yes, I think so. All right, um, and that should be the last major outstanding issue with, um, with the struct documents. We should be able to progress back to a, uh, IT, um, to a last call. Do we wanna go through another working group last call or we, do we think, um, do we want to go through another working group last call? That's my question. I'm not sure the change is big enough that we actually need any last calls. And it's probably esoteric enough that we won't get any input. That is plausible, but I think that the sort of stance in the ISG at the moment has been shaped by some recent remarks and drama in a different working group uh, relating to not doing another last call for a document that spent a couple of years in ISG evaluation and had some arguably substantial changes made and had some new IANA registrations and the expert that approved the registration then showed up as an author on the document. Um, and so there's maybe some optics considerations in terms of following the process. Yeah, that does sound a bit squirrely. Yeah. Um, ben, do you, uh, is the ISG's current position that we should go through another work? Is your interpretation of that position that we should go through another working group last call, or can we go to another I, uh, IETF last call? I don't think that there's a strict requirement to do another working group last call. Uh, after all, there's not a strict requirement to do any working group last call. Uh, okay. If you, as the chair, have the confidence that there is working group consensus, you can just proceed. And the working group last call is just the conventional way of, of determining that. But I think we've had pretty good activity from various people in resolving the issues here, so it may not be needed. Okay. Uh, my inclination is to go with an, is to not do another working group last call. Um, so I think that would mean given given everything said uh, and the feelings with the IESG, it sounds like it would be appropriate to, to schedule another IETF last call and then proceed back to evaluation. I think so. Uh, so I guess we can sync up with the chairs and Barry and me to figure out who is going to push the buttons to make that happen. All right. Um, and that's all pending the updates from Jen. Of course. All right. Any other comments on our documents? Any documents? Uh, the X509 document is currently an IETF last call. Right. Um, so we should expect to start seeing IESG feedback from that in a week or two. Correct. I think I've read some of the um, direct reviews with no complaints, with with my, with editorial complaints so far. I don't remember seeing any, but I haven't been paying attention. I guess. I thought I saw. Well, I thought I saw one. Plus, I know Russ posted a comment. Right, and 
I, I saw Russ's comment, and it's it's much clearer inside of the document than it is the the, the formatted version. But I I have made a change for that. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, Unless there's anything else, we can move on to our next topic. Let me try not to overselect. There we go. Okay, so uh, um, chartering with with all these documents now getting to a point where we're getting them again pushed out. Hopefully for the last time, um, we do need to finish up discussing our charter. Um, what We've seen agreement on in the working group is that we allow the summary here is we're going to work on certificate compression. Um, and with uh, Matson's draft as the starting point and um, being willing to accept uh, additional algorithms. Um, again, preferences for things defined by standards by recognized bodies and non-preference for state defined. I think that was some of the summaries that I've read from all the posts over the last several months. Um, included here is a link to um, the charter that's that Jim had posted several months ago. Um, has anybody had a chance to read through the that charter text? Yes. Is that John Matson? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Any, Just a second. Yes. Okay. Any comments on on that text that you're willing to share here, or um, can put the list in the next uh, day or yeah. so? Yeah, I think I have several comments. Uh, the f one comment is that um, it it refers to two outdated drafts that have now been uh, they have re been replaced with a, a single Matson draft in closely. So I guess it should be the charter should be updated to refer to that specific draft. Okay. Excellent point. Thank you. Um, second point is that. It currently only refers to, it's very strictly bound to RFC 7925. And as I commented earlier on the list, I think, I think this needs to loosen up a little bit. Uh, I think the, the working group might come to the conclusion that we will not, not fulfill compression for all all certificates that are valid according to the profile. Maybe there are some text encoding sensors that should be skipped. So I would like to formulate it as maybe a, a, a subset of RFC 7925. Uh, and then also Utah is now working on a 7925 BIS kind of document. So any changes in that document to the TLS certificate profile for IoT should also be considered. Uh, and then the, the discussion in Lake and 60s is that the I, IEEE certificate profile is very important for certain uh, IoT environments inside ITF. So I think the charter, I don't know if the, we, we should do that, but I think the charter should open up. So if the COSI working group would like to work on compression also for that, uh, the IEEE certificate profile, it should be possible. All right, um, go ahead. John, were you going to say more? Um, let, 
me see maybe that was uh, maybe that was i think joran joran will there has been several comments about uh, supporting the idea of native on the list but maybe i think joran salander is better to bring that up um, so hi john i'm here yeah uh, sorry for being late. Uh, another appointment was tripping over. Um, so I, I, I guess I, I missed the beginning of the charter discussion, and uh, there was something about why there is a why why we should do native certificates. Why why people like that? Uh, so we got uh, input from. Um, well, I think it was Hank. Uh, it was Lawrence Lundblad, uh, and it was others who uh, didn't specifically support the particular format that we were using with, uh, I mean, this, they, they were arguing, do we really need to make the most compact version or can we settle for something which looks more like a Cibor web token? But they were, uh, if I understood right, they were supporting the idea of putting the picture directly on, on the Cibor structure as an alternative. Uh, format, which which makes sense for, for devices uh, that that can implement Cbor efficiently, don't need to use uh, AS1 or, or their encoding otherwise. I think that that's uh, maybe others would like to chime in here on on the usefulness of of this platform. Um, so this is Hank. Is it fine to speak? Is my audio okay? Yes. Ah, thank you. Okay. So uh, on the um, uh, moving back a little bit on the topic of RFC uh, seven nine two five, um, we should be careful here. There has to be a balance between uh, uh, what you can compress and what you exclude of being able to be processed. Um, there are decisions here. Sometimes, uh, for example, uh, I think John highlighted the, the text characteristics, the text encoding in, in, in existing uh, certificates. This can be tricky, and we highlighted that, I think, uh, early on. But probably this is lost in time and space. So so not everything is just a string. Uh, a lot of string types, and it's awful, and it's esoteric, and it's XI for 9, of course. So um, you cannot expect anything to be uh, certain in order to uh, recreate canonically an existing certificate uh, via compression uh, in the middle. Uh, Thank we want you. Hank, did we lose him? I think he disconnected. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, well, any comments on the on the on the native format or releasing? Um... Um, I have one thing. We will definitely have to change the charter if we do that. And I was going to ask Ben if we need to change the charter to even do the compression. Um, one of the things that I put in the charter originally, where did I put it there? Sorry, uh, popping out. Uh, I think my Chrome egress has a limited, a finite set of uh, voice over IP packets we can uh, push through web servers. I don't know why. Um, it's it's weird. Sorry, I did interrupt uh, Jim right now. Right. Uh, one of the paragraphs says key management and binding of keys to identify identities are out of scope for this working group is that sentence going to have to be eliminated in order to do any of the certificate work question for ben uh, 
I think that would have to be removed in order to do native certificates. I think it is not problematic for doing translation or compression of X509 certificates into a smaller encoding. Um, for this proposing native certificate format, um, how critical is it to have that? Uh, is that something we need to be working on now, or is that something we can start with certificate compression and revisit this going forward? So this is Hank. Sorry, um, I'm now interjecting properly to to uh, Julian. Um, <laughs> But uh, 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 there's, there's uh, of course, a rather obvious um, 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 baggage here um, because uh, you are going to uh, impose uh, for every constraint device that really has to look at a identity document and not only uh, provide it. You have a double stack uh, feature now. You have to parse the uh, effective uh, compression, of course, in order to create then and that is effort, uh, the actual certificate, and 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 also parse the certificate. So, so the dual stack always is a little bit uh, problematic. People are wondering, and that is not certain, not not necessarily uh, starting with uh, CAs, but it is uh, pushed to CAs today. Um, that there's a dire need for uh, key reduction, key management reduction, uh, parser overhead, encoding overhead. And so on in IoT because that is cost. So um, I would say this is uh, an open discussion, yes, but it should not be excluded from a uh, topic that we want to talk about. So uh, if you're talking about the charter here uh, as a list of topics that we talk about, maybe it should be more explicit about uh, we explore this and we really make sure uh, to listen and to, to ask uh, in this discussion. And then uh, it should be like a letter. It should be, it should be uh, not the goal to set something here, but the goal to uh, understand something here. And that is uh, just Hank's uh, personal point of view. Just filling in on, on Hank there, it's, it's definitely, this dual stack is definitely not a very good solution for constraint setting. It, it's, it's a migration path for not so constrained devices, which could have. Um, which, which could handle the, the, the dual encodings. But for, for the most constrained devices, I think that we really want to have the native one. So I guess when we're talking about the dual stack, is that in terms of conventional DUR X509 certificates and then the COSE compressed form, those are the two stacks? Or is the, the second of the two stacks the native certs? Uh, right, so that wasn't very clear. So, so what I meant was that you, with with, with compression format, you need to basically decompress uh, before before you verify the signature. Right. And uh, and if you don't, uh, if, with a native format, you could remain in CBOR. You can do all the parsing. So that's basically whether you need to have only CBOR or CBOR and ASN one. Okay, I, th I think that was what I thought we were saying, but I just wanted to check. <laughs> so, sorry. Thanks. Um, so, so adding to this, that there will be a there are mechanisms in place today that use certificates to store information that are not necessarily only identity based. You all know, I think that X509 can be used. Uh, the, the, the document format can be used to store arbitrary data, and people do that a lot. And people create uh, certificates as proofs, as evidence, as uh, as uh, tokens. Maybe even uh, that's not a bad, that's that's not a very good thing. Um, they are they are they are short lived. Uh, they are complicated, and uh, this is inherited somehow. And I think this inheritance should be somehow uh, grown out uh, at some point uh, because it is costly. 
And that is the only reason here. So um, I think people are a little bit uh, worried that we retain legacy here uh, for, for too long as, as is necessary for the domain of application. And, and we do not want to say that this is unnecessary to uh, uh, do the conversion, do the migration, do the, uh, uh, all the uh, standards that uh, uh, facilitate it. It's very, very necessary. And this is, I think, uh, uh, compression first. Um, but uh, in the end, uh, at some point, uh, people hope I think that uh, will grow something uh, more uh, streamlined from this uh, in the end. All right. Uh, thank you all. Um, so what? What, what I'm struggling with is what, what our action to take from this is. Um, Hank or John or Goran, are one of you or anybody else willing to help propose um, texts that we can discuss around um, this charter change? Sure, we could, we could try. Okay. So I mean, it, it's basically the second. It's the last paragraph of the car charter, and I think it's more or less the second sentence of the last paragraph that we'd like to um, perhaps rephrase. Okay. Because I so, think I think that will help us get a better picture around what it is we're 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 going to sign up for. Okay. So we come back with the proposal to the to the list. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, okay. Uh, anything else with regards to the charter that we want to discuss? Um, yeah, I have a third proposed change. Maybe we should add that in the certificate compression work, because it should. Um, uh, collaborate and coordinate with the TLS Utah Lake. Um, I I also I, I wrote down some yes text for the updated charter and sent it to the list a couple of seconds ago. Okay. So I have a question. About the charter. Yes. What's the what's the timeline here that we want? And the goal. That is a very good question. That was going to be the next question to the working group. Um, um, so I think what's what's been holding up the work on this charter so far has just been trying to get through all of the documents we already had. Um, and now that it looks like we may just be through them again, uh, I mean, I think I think it part of this is going to depend on um, getting uh, getting the proposed text from from John and Goran and, and company. Um, if you have a potential timeline for that, um, that would be great. Um, Otherwise, we could talk about another checkpoint to see where we're at. And I would argue three or four weeks. Um, yeah, I suppose we we will have have a proposal um, um, in a couple of weeks, probably, or or even earlier okay that would be great so this, so this is hank uh, um of course uh, so so having a proposal early is uh, easy that, that's the easy task so uh, we just write text and push <laughs> we click the button and then then uh, but then uh, there's the itf meeting upcoming so when i hear uh, this time frame uh, and this is independent of the content actually this is, in, this is just uh, my my uh, feeling um so, are you aiming for ITF to have a uh, uh, to weigh this, like like as a proposal? Uh, is, uh, so, I think that is an interesting question from my side. Um, 
Uh, is the IETF meeting, the virtual meeting, uh, uh, going to be a cornerstone here that uh, uh, kickstarts uh, uh, decision making, or or is this not necessarily set as, uh, as the turning point, so to speak? Well, historically, with this working group this time around, the the meetings have been a, a worthwhile. Um, checkpoint um, to get work progressing, to get work done. Um, so I think given that, it seems reasonable that to have a new charter ready, to have a goal of having the new charter ready to go um, for additional review by the time of IETF 109 seems reasonable. Yeah, this is exactly what I heard, and I think that's okay. Uh, but I think we have to speak that out loud as a, I don't know, uh, um, secondary milestone, I don't know. Um, so, so we have to get our um, stuff together um, um, and to be presentable and uh, discussable at the next meeting. Okay, that's fair. Um, so, so question question from, from me. So I, I, I got the impression that we should not have the meeting at ITF 109. That we should sort of stick to the virtual interview, or did I misunderstand something? Um, well, that brings us to some other business. Um, the, so the chairs have heard um, grumblings about the next meeting, um, and so we post the question of whether we want to have a meeting, um, and we need to make that decision. We need to make that decision within the next. Um, 10 days or so. Um, so I know we've gotten some feedback from uh, Goran and from somebody else about not having, uh, arguing not to try to schedule a, um, a meeting during the, the next, uh, during IE 109. Um, but it would help to get more feedback on that. So, to give feedback about that, um, are we planning on having rec like um, interims biweekly or monthly or after that or what's what's the other plan? Um, well, if we do not if we do not meet at ITF one hundred nine, um, having a series of virtual interims, I think having a series of virtual interims will probably be necessary no matter what. Um, starting after ITF 109 or because this was the, you said this was the last one of this series this is the last one currently scheduled so one of the questions we wanted to ask is when you know where, where when do we going? restart correct and i think that will also then help inform whether we have a meeting at 109 I will go on record as saying if the reason how come people don't want to have a meeting is because the time is inconvenient, I don't care. I think we should have a meeting anyway. If the reason why, why we don't need a meeting is because we don't have anything to talk about, that's fine. My opinion is that um, it's true that we're doing good progress in the interims, which it makes sense what you said that in the interims could uh, could be enough. But on the other hand, I always look at participants and list like how many people are joining these meetings. And I believe that during the ATF week, we get more participants also because there is some what Kasten calls tourists showing up. Um, so there is that 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 drawback of not scheduling a meeting during the ITF week. Sure. Um, I just want to one, one clear, a couple of clarifications on my part. Um, what I have observed is that we get things done with the meetings um, in, in term or um, part of the broader picture is kind of inconsequential on that part. We, we've, this working group has been getting things done when when we have meetings um 
So I don't think that's that's an argument to skip the face the virtual meeting face to face meeting for interims. Uh, and to Francesca's point, um, looking at our current attendees list, I believe that we get um, four to five times more attendance with the the IATF aligned meetings than we do with our interims. Yeah, it's not only, it, it, it's because it's the ATF week, so it's easier to find the meetings and to know that something is happening compared to uh, interims where you have to be aware that interims are happening to be able to participate. Right. Exactly. So the uh, scope of the ITF meetings is virtual, is, is, uh, the, the time frame is uh, smaller. And uh, so uh, conflicts are higher, but also uh, meeting um, number is lower, uh, lower. So this is a weird mix. Nobody really knows how this will work out again. And this is a new experiment. Uh, so, uh, uh, for example, I did not uh, uh, put out COSI as a conflict, for example. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm uh, uh, highlighting this. So uh, uh, maybe there might be a... a uh, some, I don't know, dual browser, dual speaker set thing is happening. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, um, yeah, but uh, in the end, I think it warrants, it is warranted to have to try this. And I would support a uh, ITF virtual meeting uh, scheduled session. But then again, if we don't have, as Jim said, if we don't have a, a, a agenda work to, to discuss right. then there is really no point in having the, the meeting right. well as things stand um that agenda, if we had to set that agenda right now that agenda would be finalizing our charter so i think we do have work um and it's easy to cancel a meeting after it's scheduled it's harder to schedule a meeting if it's not been scheduled Yes, uh, exactly that. Uh, uh, try the effort uh, and maybe uh, uh, face reality afterwards. Uh, that is, I think, a good idea. Also, um, yes, uh, if there's no agenda, I think the uh, charter is uh, the... Uh, uh, no, that, actually not. Uh, that, that we have discussed a lot of important things today. Uh, so uh, contrast signature and, and, and the likes. And so I think there is enough charter uh, for a small meeting. That's not the big time slot, but the uh, typical time slot. And I would, again, support this. I mean, we might be done with the charter by then. You don't think so? It's entirely mm. possible. I Go ahead, Hank. Sorry about that. No, no, no problem at all. I, I, I actually, I am the pessimist here. <laughs> so I like to hear like uh, things, notions like, uh, yeah, we, we done that. Then. That, that's fine. It would be excellent, actually. You know, um, but uh, people uh, look at things, and uh, as, as um, was highlighted already before, uh, uh, the meeting might have uh, uh, times five higher attendance, and then people look again at the current state. So uh, maybe uh, messages thrown on the list, maybe messages uh, uh, to review charters are only acknowledged and then uh, actually received at the at a virtual interim meeting where uh, um, awareness is raised. So that's that's just uh, uh, I don't know. Um, daily based facts, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, if you if you are honest, I think uh, a meeting is a good conversion point. So uh, again, that's why I highlighted the question initially. Um, I think this is helpful, and uh, yes, my, you might have a very stable thing, and it might be ripped apart if more people look at it. So, so I'm I'm a little bit confused here. The agenda for today, the second bullet is finalizing charter. I still we think we're going to have that until still talk about in the IDF under 109. So, so first of all, we cannot finalize it when we are asked to uh, add a addition. I think. <laughs> no, <Okay>. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like the ambition was to get ready a little bit before. Some sometimes chairs are very optimistic and 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 corrections happen. I believe that's what happened this time. Uh, so, um, so at least what I'm hearing here 
And from what we've received um, through email, we've received through email is a preference to just stick with interims. But what we're hearing here is let's schedule the meeting. And if we don't need it, we can cancel it later, but let's schedule it. Um, if we do, so regardless of whether, so even with scheduling it, what do we want to do for interims between now and uh, IATF 109 in early November? Finalize the chart. <laughs> okay. Do we want to do that with interims or do we want to stick with uh, lift communication until the meeting to see how far we get? Just note that the soonest I think we can schedule another interim is uh, two weeks. sooner than two weeks from today. Uh, in, in, in Jabber, Michael suggested once a month. Okay. Which seems like a reasonable interval for now. Okay. Any objections to that? Okay, so the chairs will get um, will get something scheduled definitely for October, um, the soonest that we can fit a slot into. Um, Eva and I will talk about it and see see where we can get that done. Um, we will schedule for one hundred and nine, and also look into scheduling for. Um, through until at least IATF 110 for interims. Does that sound reasonable? Oh, so what would be the time for the interim? Is the same time good for you? I think that's the question for people here. The time is very good. Okay, then we'll we'll stick with with we'll we'll assume this time. Um, we will send out a, a note to the list um, on this, um, but we are going to get this scheduled before we are going to get the schedule before the next week starts. At least October schedule before next week starts. because we are running out of time. All right, um, with that, is there any other business uh, anyone wants to discuss? We've got uh, 10 minutes scheduled. I'll take the silence as a no. Um, so I think that means that we are wrapped. We have a number of action items. We'll get started. We'll get these things posted and. Yeah, I have ready. one question. Oh, go so, ahead. Sorry. sorry. For ten, so uh, we already have a text now, a proposed text by John. So can we quickly go through it? Oh, I mean, we have most people here. So at least we can make some consensus if we need to make any changes in the tech, proposed text. It's very short. Uh, I just saw John e email. Okay. Uh, one moment. So we can put it up on the screen because I haven't seen it yet. Uh, that's what I'm trying to work on right now. Okay. Uh, come on. Once I. I posted it in the WebEx chat. Okay. There we go. I think this is the text that we're talking about. Yes. Can you make it bigger so I can read it? 
Is this is this better? Only using up about one fourth of your real estate on the screen. Of course it is. All right. Uh, if you increase the window size, yeah. Better? Much Good. better. Well, now that you're sending more pixels, so it winds up smaller on my screen. Whereas I could have zoomed, now I can't zoom you very well. Uh, I'll, I'll go find the original this message. Is fine. This is fine. Okay, so uh, basically have three proposed additions. Um, any comments from those here? We've got this here. We've got the link posted in the WebEx chat. It's on the mailing list. I think we've got a few places you can find it. I just posted on the chat. It should be uh, 802.1 AR, not 802.11 AR. Other than that, I like the additions. Any other comments? No objection to these changes. OK. We will still confirm this on the list. Um, the chairs will at least post a reply to you, John, um, to try to call more attention to it. And then um, is there any other, any other business? Okay, not hearing any any calls. I think we can uh, call today's meeting. Um, thank you all for attending. We will get uh, minutes posted once we have the recording. Um, and we will start um, start working through the chair. We'll, the chairs will have, have a short discussion and we'll start working through our um, list of items, actions from this meeting. All right, thank you all, I'm ending the recording now.